For the next couple of videos, I actually want to make a more involved blueprint mechanic. And specifically, I'm, I want to make a moving platform. And there's a lot of little complications that go into that. So I'm going to break this up into multiple videos. This first video is mainly just going to be setting up the platform, defining the skeletal mesh, and talking about custom events. And then we will build the animation into it in other videos. And uh, it'll have a lot of modular components to it because really I want to be able to build a moving platform that I can control the speed, um, the variation. Uh, you know, I may want to duplicate it around and uh, have them sync up and whatnot. So I'm gonna show you how to put that together. But first we need to start building it. So let's do our blueprints. This is the first person blueprint. I'm gonna minimize that. Project mechanics, let's right click and make a new blueprint class right here. And this is the moving platform will be something that exists inside of our world. So I'm gonna make this as an actor. And I'm gonna rename this BP underscore moving platform. I wanna make sure I save all and make sure that I save this new asset that I created. Go back in there. So this is the pivot on the floor. What I want to do is I want to give my moving platform, which I'm going to drag into my level now, I want to give this some sort of skeletal mesh. Now, if you imported the starter content, there's a few handy ones in there that we can use. I'm going to show you one. On our blueprint, we're going to add component and we're going to add a static mesh. Our mesh is set to movable, so that's good. Now we need to define which mesh. And if you if you look here, this floor 400 by 400, I think this is a pretty good size. You could make um, multiple moving platforms. You could expose this part and swap it out or, or whatever. Choose what's appropriate. Maybe you have a better mesh for this. For me, I think 400 by 400 is fine. And you'll notice that it puts the, the pivot of the platform in the corner. I actually like that because it allows us to line to line this up with the corner of our geometry somewhere. So we wanted this moving platform to come to this corner right here. That's where our pivot is. So that, I think that's good. I don't really need it in the middle. So I'm going to compile and save. And let's see what happens to our room. You'll see how it swapped around. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition this where we want it. I'm gonna hit the space bar or you, know, you can use whatever hotkeys to cycle. And I'm gonna go to my position node. You may need to turn down the grid uh, or turn it up, but make sure you are working on the grid to some degree. I'm gonna move it to this corner right there. I'll just get it close. Doesn't need to be exact. Okay. And then I wanna make sure it's not going through the floor. So I'm gonna try to put it pretty close to the floor. I think that's fine. And then I can look at it and I can plan and I can say, okay, I want it to do this, or maybe I want it to rotate or something. Um, and I'm just putting my initial position. I'm gonna save my map, hop back into my blueprint. I wanna go into my event graph. Now we don't really need a lot of these nodes here. Um, one thing we do want is begin play because I want this to start moving on begin play. And I'm gonna show you a way that doesn't involve the update tick or the constant per frame stuff. We're gonna do this through a timeline eventually. That way we have more control over a uh, lerping value. But for now, we're gonna do begin play and just say, you know what? As soon as this level starts, I want this actor to do something. And I wanna talk about custom events because they're, they're really handy. If you right click and you start typing in custom event, add custom event, and now I, want to, now I want to relabel this to what it is going to do, which is start movement. Or let's put a space there, start movement. And what this does is this is a, um, this is a, a call so that whenever we call start movement anywhere else, so you can see if I drag off and I type in start movement, uh, if I can spell it right, start movement, you'll see because we created this custom event and we named it, we can now see this and we can hook into it, which now from anywhere inside of this blueprint, we can say, oh, call into this custom event we made. You can think of this as a function and this is a calling the function um, because you can even, if you wanted to add nodes and parameters and things, they call them inputs here. You can add some parameters into this 
that will um, give you more control and more things to do, but I'm not gonna bother with that yet. For now, on event begin play, we wanna start the movement. And then we're gonna pull off of this and just prove that it'll do something. Print string, start movement, compile save, minimize. And so now we're just calling our custom event because eventually we are going to want to call this event from multiple places in our script. It's just a really handy way of um, boxing this all up into a single thing and then just doing it once down here. Again, very similar to functions and calling a function multiple times in a single script. You, you don't want to retype everything. So if we hit play, you'll, you'll see the start movement actually popped up at the very beginning. So we know that we're getting our call inside of our blueprint. So now that we've talked about custom classes and we've done our setup, we're good to go into some, some movement code, which I'll do in future videos. And we can actually get this thing moving and it'll be pretty cool.